Thank you for letting me know. Is that better? Can Suzanne, can you hear me more clearly now? Let us know if it let us know. Much yeah, oh, thank you for letting me know. I didn't thank realize you. yet. I, I often, um, I also do gong events and obviously I have to have certain settings on for that that mean it's not going to deafen people <laughs> <laughs> the other way. <laughs> Well, look, let's get cracking. Um, we've got quite a few participants in here now, which is really exciting. Um, and we can hear you, which makes it even better. Um, so um, I, I'm, I would imagine most people watching this are very aware of who you are, the wonderful Rachel Welford, um, who is I'm more than I can say grateful for one of our coaches and has worked with Pushnell um, for two, three years. It's quite a while, isn't it? Pretty much since I started my business, yeah. So it's yeah, it's, yeah, about two years now, I think. Yeah, I've, I've, yeah, I think I've been going about a year when I when I started sure. working with you guys. So yeah, because I know, like, I remember Lou, who used to be our um, old program director, came and saw you and was just quite blown away uh, by you. And I can remember putting you in for our, one of our first proposals with our clients, and they just absolutely loved it and, and loved the work that you did with them. So I'm super Aww. proud of that. And yeah, and you remain one of our most loved and talented coaches. So I'm very Aww. very proud you're part of our team. Thanks, guys. <laughs> uh, um, so, a quick intro to Rach, if you don't know her. Um, Rach is a holistic therapist, meditation teacher, and coach. After experiencing burnout herself, and we are going to talk about this quite a lot, mm. um, because obviously it's something that really, really taps in for me as well, and being bedridden with mental health issues, Rach started researching alternative health practice, meditation, and self-help, which, you know, I think actually as you tell your story it would be really really interesting because it was so different to where you had been previously mm -hmm. um through these practices she completely turned her life around and now she shares everything that she's learned with all the clients she worked with to create incredible and measurable changes in each of their lives and you know for me that just resonates like through and through with the stuff that we do with push you know and that that for me is why i think we get on so well and i think why you, it, you you're such a valued member of the team because you are just so in line with what with what with how we feel as well our holy thoughts um I think, I think we're both driven aren't we by not so much the the business in terms of you know the finances or this that and the other but like for me one of my main drivers is just preventing suffering absolutely and the no, more I, that i can do that the more i'm just like revved up <laughs> it's so true and, and i don't want to I, I mean I, I could talk about this for ages but it's really interesting actually we saw a proposal the other day um from one of our competitors um and they were they, 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 yeah. <laughs> i think how that fell into my hands um <laughs> and saw the prices that they're charging and we have basically throughout everything that's going on we have just literally slashed all of our prices because we know that budgets are tight and we just need to get this stuff out there, right? We want, we mm. want to democratise this stuff to everyone because it was the one thing we need more than ever. And we're doing loads of free stuff and blah, blah, blah. And these guys, their prices were just insane. Like, they were like, they're the same as, as they had been pre-COVID. And I was like, how could you, man? Like, that is, like, one of our core values is being human and, you know, and kindness and love shines through in everything that we do. And I just don't understand how someone can be of the mindset about still making making money in that way through a time like this. It just blows my mind. Anyway, mm. sorry, I completely digress. Um, right. Let's talk about you. Um, and I would love to to kind of kick things off, Rach. Um, you, your story for me is, is an incredibly powerful one. Um, and I would love you to share that um, with our audience today about kind of what's got you here. Um, we're obviously going to be talking about stress and how we hack it and your your background is is incredibly interesting to, to understand why you got here so talk to us about that please well I guess the real ch turning point was in 2014 um, I had a very severe breakdown I was bedridden for, for months I was diagnosed with depression and anxiety which I realized actually I think I've had my whole life but I didn't I didn't know what it was I just thought that's what life was like I thought everyone felt like that and um yeah i went through some pretty severe very very deep depths of depression suicide attempts and um you know just trying not to kill myself every day which was you know pretty <laughs> pretty dire like i know i laugh about it now but because it seems so far removed from how i feel about myself now but it was really you know i was in a very dark and low and awful place and I was medicated like a lot of people would be in that situation. I was very, very blessed and very lucky that my parents were in a position to literally kind of scoop me up and take me home and look after me because I just couldn't, I couldn't function. I didn't work for a year. 
I went back to work part time after a year um, because I basically walked back into the office where I used to work a place, you know, and I'd been building my career for 12 years as a sales director and I was um, working in the niche of action sports and I was basically kind of up there as, you know, working for all the brands that I wanted to work for, you know, doing some really exciting projects and things, traveling around the world, snowboarding, you know, I was really bloody lucky. But as soon mm. as I walked into that office, I was like, this job's going to kill me. So I just quit on the spot. And I did feel bad for the company because it had been a year that they'd been waiting for me to go back. But I just knew, I was like, I can't go back to this life. It's, it's going to kill me. And so, yeah, I just started working part time, did some waitressing, you know, <laughs> kind of like <laughs> trying to get myself, get build my life back together. And it took me another two years after the break. So it's basically three years um, from the breakdown. So 2014 to 2017, I was still really quite unwell and I kept thinking I was better but actually then on reflection and six months later I'd be like god I was still really ill then and then six months after mm -hmm. that I'd be like wow I was still really ill then um and so three years ago um I set up Welford Wellbeing because p part of that journey was you know I was being medicated and I started getting better to a point but I just wasn't getting better and I kept having this thought process of I just want to get back to normal but then what I started to realize was my normal wasn't normal my right, normal was what right. was making me sick and so I had to basically reevaluate my whole life I had to change where I worked I had to change my friendship groups I had to change the way I behaved around alcohol and food and exercise and reprogram my mindset like all kinds of different things and what I found through that journey of kind of self-discovery and healing was that there's a shed ton of information that has been kept from people and that we are so much more powerful than we realize we're not our labels you know i do still have a diagnosis of depression and anxiety but i m mastered my mental health through other tools such as meditation yeah. tapping therapy you know all these different kinds of things i now m manage that instead of you know my medication if you like is meditation and you know watching my thoughts and self-awareness and connecting with friends and doing things that bring me joy like making sure how much fun have I had this week you know yeah. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah, that yeah. is really important so yeah that's kind of my journey really and then I just got really passionate about the tools that I'd used on my journey things like um, energy healing Reiki um, emotional freedom technique also known as tapping it's a little bit like um, acupuncture for the emotions if you like without using yeah. any needles um sound therapy meditation all these kind of things that i'd used in my journey i was like i want to learn more about this and how they work and and now that's what i do going and, and do you know what there are there are a few things that i really want to pick up on there um that are just that just resonate with me so much you know that whole thing of I didn't realize you know i no get idea. that i i'm that and that before i you know before i was signed off i knew that something was wrong but i didn't know what it was right i couldn't put my finger on it and 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 i look back now on that time prior and i was i was existing i was sleepwalking i was just you know i i that it was i was in this thing of just like of things not being quite right you know with the benefit of hindsight i can see all of those different things that were going on you know like my my values not being quite right not understanding you know what my purpose was or you know and then like the, my brain being literally on fire with imposter syndrome mm. you know and, which is I, I, literally i feel like, like i look back on it now it was on fire yeah. and you know, when that kind of terminology is, is stressful in itself, right? And, but, but I didn't know any different. That no. was my normal. I, didn't I think really this know. is the thing when you look back, you know, I hate even saying this out loud now because it just sounds so awful, but there used to be, um, anyone that knows it or might have even seen it, but um, in Spitalfields Market in, um, in Shoreditch. London. Yeah. Oh no, not Spitalfields. What's it called? What's the meat market? I always get them mixed Billingsgate. up. Billingsgate. No, the meat, oh, Smithfield. Um, Smithfield. Sorry, I always get them mixed up. <laughs> Smithfield Market is yeah. basically this um, huge market in London. If you've ever been to yeah. Fabric Nightclub, it's, it's the one opposite there. Might have been part and, of what added to the stress phase. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's got this like one bit of the market and then this big archway that goes um, through yeah, it and then yeah, another yeah. bit of the market. And that archway was my office window I used to look at that archway. And on the archway, there was this big sign that says slow. And it's for like lorries and stuff, you know, to say like slow down. 
and um, I used to look out the window and I used to just stare at that sign for so long in a day like just looking at it like slow 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 which obviously I'm, in my head I'm thinking like you need to slow down but I didn't realize that's what I was doing and often I would fantasize about jumping out of the window in my office wow, wow. and you just think how did I not know that that was that something was incredibly wrong and like I remember having a conversation just before my about two weeks before I had my full breakdown with a, a colleague that I worked with well she's a colleague she's a good friend of mine uh, we're still in touch now but um you know someone that I worked with and, and I, I said to her we were crossing the road and I said oh you know like when you cross the road and you always think like you sort of wish you'd get hit by a car not because you want to die but just like two weeks in hospital hospital would be quite <laughs> nice and she I just remember her fat like her face was like what? what and I yeah. thought that was complete like my mindset had got to the point where and this yeah. you know I think people think this happens overnight it doesn't it's slow and, and it's, it's, it's exactly the word I was going to use so and then you don't like, notice it's when it gets that deep where you're like literally spending your day fantasizing about getting hit by cars and jumping out windows and you that's think that's okay and it's normal because it's happened over such a slow process like if you went from being happy go lucky like everything's cool and you know i love my life to that overnight yeah, you notice yeah, it. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, it yeah. starts very very slowly and very very like little Don't negative stop. having digs at yourself in different ways until eventually you've just eroded yeah. all your self-esteem and everything and it's just like oh well it is i mean it's basically it's it's an abusive relationship isn't it you know of course uh, so yeah isn't it yeah. i hadn't really thought You're about an abusive it like relationship with yourself i never even yourself. thought it, it completely yeah. is it and when really I look is. back now on things like how I used to just, you know, I don't know if people listening might resonate with this and, you know, feel free to put in the chat box or whatever, but I would just have little digs at myself all the time. I wouldn't oh. go to bed when I was tired. I'd keep eating when I was full. I wouldn't eat. I'd starve myself if I thought I'd put on weight. I'd I'd literally abuse myself with exercise, you know, from I'd get up super, super early in the morning. I'd go to Bikram yoga before work and then I'd cycle. And I think it was about 10 or 12 miles to work, cycle there after Bikram and then you know grab a prep eat my breakfast at my desk like work through grab some lunch there was a little a little cafe little Giorgio I think his name was a little Italian <laughs> guy grab grab your salad out, out the cafe back at your desk you know so you'd have literally two minutes down downstairs you know I smoked then as well I'd, I'd get pissed every single night it would always be after work drinks or you know in the lots of industries probably like this but action sports yeah. there's always a free bar somewhere yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. it's always some movie premiere or whatever if it's yeah. the winter and and, and I, um, could, I could i could certainly i could celebrate my way through anything it's like fucking hell okay it's tuesday night calm down do you know what i mean yeah because You're i wanted i wanted to distracting from life absolutely yeah. absolutely i couldn't agree with you more and and the irony is is that it's you treating yourself like that i mean I it's know. just nuts isn't it and and all of those things, you know, those things like the Bikram yoga or, you know, or, or the cycling, even the things that are good, you're doing to a degree that it's bad, right? Because yeah. The volume of stress it's putting on your body. And I wasn't doing it to feel good about myself. No, no it was it, like it, a, yeah. on reflection, it was a dig. Like, and yeah. I'd be sort of almost like showing off to people as well, like how much I could cope with. Like, yeah, well, like, I yeah, managed to get yeah, up and yeah. go to yoga every morning and do this and do that and da, da 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 And on the outside, I looked healthy and fun and like this work hard, play hard party girl. And on the inside, I was absolutely just this terrified Breaking. little mess. It's yeah. mad, isn't it? Like, again, I, and I was I was talking about that to someone the other day, day. That kind of competitiveness of how much you can take on. Mm. We're, we're becoming competitive with something that's ultimately fucking burning us out. I mean, yeah. again, it, it's and who are you trying to prove it to anyway? You know, who, anyway, I mean, we and I could wang on about this. Clearly, yeah. we could wang on about it for ages. What this is why we have a list. <laughs> Back to the <laughs> list. <laughs> um, so, uh, literally, Alana would kill me. Um, so let's go back to, let's talk a little bit about what stress actually is. So we kind of understand the scene of it, you know, and obviously you and I have, have been affected by this. Um, lot massively to the point it made us change both of our careers mm. ironically um but let's talk a little bit and i know that this is your thing right i want to talk about what stress is because i want to talk about why it's good i want to talk about why it's bad i want to talk about what's actually happening to our bodies when stress happens what is it i think this is this was a real eye-opener for me as well when i started to understand especially anyone who's I, I don't know if you can let me know in the chat box does anyone suffer with like anxiety or 
How does your stress play out for you? It'd be really interesting to know because I can um, I can hopefully give you some specific tools that might help you with your type of stress because everybody feels stressed differently is the first thing. There's a lot of shame around stress, I think. Well, I shouldn't you be You see so the stressed. chat box, by the way. Oh, yeah, I can. Yeah, okay. How do you stop yourself being so competitive? Oh, okay, I'll come back to that. Um, so I think a lot there's, of tips later on. yeah, and if you just put them in and I'll, I'll, I will answer everyone's questions, but I think, um, you know, firstly, there's a lot of shame around stress. Why am I stressed? I don't deserve to be stressed. It's not like, you know, you start comparing to someone else who's maybe got other things happening in their life. That's worse than yours. Um, uh, and actually it doesn't matter. Like if you're, if everyone has a different capacity for how much stress they can take and so your capacity may be different and that capacity will change each day and I think people expect us to have this very standard you know well you coped with that yesterday you know and it's like well yeah but yesterday was yesterday and today's today so let go of any shame firstly around mm -hmm. your what stresses you out and whether you should be able to cope or not because that's all subjective anyway Secondly, or things like when your parents say you've got it good now you don't know what it was like when we were younger I mean that's not going to, that makes, how does that help? Helpful. Makes zero difference in my yeah, day. You know not what I mean? helpful. <laughs> <laughs> not helpful, you know. Um, and there will have been things, you know, there will be things that we've got easier, probably. But there's probably things that they had easier in different ways. So, you know, Absolutely. everything is subjective. Um, and relative. And, yeah. And I think the second thing is to look at how stress shows up in your life. So, generally, what we have when we get stressed most people listening to this, if you've ever read anything about stress, you probably know about our fight, flight, freeze system. And so what this is, is basically a system that is very, very effective at keeping us alive. It's probably why you're here today and why you've not been hit by a truck or like had some horrible accident when you were a kid. Because actually it's very quick, it's very swift and it has only three options. So when you're in stress... You don't have access to creativity, you don't have access to logic, you don't have mm -hmm. access to 95% of your brain. You have access to, should I run away? Should I overpower, intimidate or physically fight this thing? Or should I friggin' hide? And that's it. That's all you have. Either go out, all out and fill every hour or complete shutting down, do nothing. Yeah. Right. And I'm going to explain why this is. So what tends to happen, this is how it might show up for you. This is how to recognise what kind of stress you're experiencing because it will be one of these three things and when you're in this phase of stress there's no point trying to do anything other than get yourself out of this phase of stress because yeah, you're yeah, not yeah. going to be effective at all as a person not just you anybody <laughs> basically so if you are in flight so you're basically your body wants you to run away how this might show up or how you might recognize this in yourself or other people that you might be dealing with because i think this often helps with communication especially in the workplace mm -hmm. is look where your feet are pointing if your feet are pointing towards the person that you are talking to or communicating with it's highly likely you're not in flight if your feet are subconsciously pointing towards the door then that is a very good indication that you no longer want to be in that conversation or in that situation or in or wherever you are. If you're also not looking, you're not making eye contact anymore with the person, yeah, you're looking yeah. at a window or a door, that is a very clear indication that you're starting to go into flight. You're switching off, you don't want to be there anymore. You may also find that you start to fiddle. I haven't got a pen with me, but I used to do this all the time. Or your foot, tapping your foot, fiddling with a pen you know this kind of thing you're like you're not comfortable you don't want to be there anymore so that's flight that's basically when, when what's happening in the physiology when you're in flight is that you're looking for an exit mm -hmm. that's that's it I, I don't want to be here anymore I don't care what you're saying I need to get out of here where's my safest and quickest exit what and by the way right Mm. Sorry, you said something really interesting at the beginning of this. It's everyone going through this, right? These, these things, you know, I think we need to bring this back to as well. Stress is not a weakness, right? Or no. these, these reactions, it is a physical, physical reaction of which it's one of these things, right? Yeah, and, and everybody has this system. It's what keeps us alive. It's actually a very effective, incredible yeah. system when it's working properly. But this is why we talk about hacking it, because sometimes it misfires. 
Um, yeah. And, you know, this oh, system was essentially created when, you know, we might have probably the only stress that we had would have been not being able to find food or being attacked by a bear or something yeah. like that. Or, a, I don't know, we don't have, I don't think we have wild lions in England. <laughs> but, you know, um, but if you're in Africa, you know, that would have been a real, a real risk, you know. So, um, you know, the, the, this system was, is actually very, very effective and it works very, very well. And, it, you know, if yeah. you are, you know, in the unfortunate situation where you're walking home one night and someone tries to mug you, you're frigging grateful for this system. Because it's course. what will get you out of that situation or allow you to survive nine times out of ten, those kind of situations. So, you know, we don't want to shut this system down. It's actually very effective and, and very um, useful to have. But it doesn't know the difference between a mugging and a, and a, mm -hmm. and a deadline that's suddenly been Yeah, forward. yeah, yeah. You and know, it's and the of is... it happening, right? You know, it's that, that production. I, I, was, um, I, was listening, I was speaking to a doctor about this the other day. And they were saying that so 70 to 90 percent of all ailments that he has coming into the surgery is down to stress, right? Mm. Because of that physical reaction that's happening within the body and the different things that it does. So one of them being that sugar is released out um, into the liver. Yeah. And actually that now be, as a means of being able to speed us up in order to be able to do to flee yeah. or, or fight or overcome. And he, he was saying that that now is the responsibility for uh, many of the instances of diabetes too. Now, of course, a lot of it's down to bad diet as well. Fatty liver syndrome, but also why do you have a bad diet and why, and also alcohol, Absolutely. you know, you're more stressed. Absolutely. So what you're doing, you're reaching for sugary foods, fatty foods and alcohol because it's coping yeah. mechanisms. They make you feel a bit better in the moment. It's so it's, you know, actually yeah. you're, you're, you know, create the, the, the physiology is creating a, problem in well it's a solution actually isn't it really you know i'm going to release all this sugar into the liver so you've got more energy if you need to run away um and then on top of that you're having more sugar and more because you're you're stressed you know um so flight you're basically feet pointing towards the door eyes looking at doors eyes looking at windows fiddling with yeah. pens and things what you'll find is what's happening physiologically is your heart rate's going to go up your yeah. blood is going to be pumped primarily to your leg and your buttock muscles. So you might start to feel like your legs are fidgety because essentially your body wants to run. That's what it wants to do. So, but if you're obviously in an office situation, you, you know, <laughs> it's going to show up like this. Yeah. Because you're yeah. like, ah, so that's flight. The second um, part is um, fight. Now, with fight, we're not talking about necessarily always a fist fight per mm. se. That could be an option, but actually it's more about intimidation. Can I overpower my prey or my problem? Yeah. Um, and so how that might show up is, and what you'll find with this option is all the blood is going to go into your arms, your hands and your jaw. So this often shows up as that tense jaw. Uh, feeling really? Like, ah. Yeah, because really what you want to do is is attack you 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 know it's it's yeah. very primitive you your jaws getting ready to potentially bite your hands are getting ready to claw and punch and you know and your biceps you're you're ready you're like right but often this shows up in intimidation techniques so what might that look like shouting talking over people um becoming more aggressive in your in your physical body position you know like actually you know, we see those guys, don't we? Maybe if you live in yeah. Seaside Town like I did on yeah. a weekend. Yeah, go on in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but in an office environment, that might show up as, you never did that project. You've messed that up. Yeah. Your fault. You know, you're putting your stuff on someone else. Like, that's how that's going to show up. It's very much, you know, puffing your chest like, I've, I'm this, you're, I'm overpowering you, I'm better than you. I heard you. This, um, this beautiful thing the other day that said about how anger is, is never the, 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 the actual emotion. Anger is the, um, anger the secondary exist. emotion. Yeah, it's, it's the a cover emotion. emotion. Of course. How interesting is anger, that? Anger, nine it's times like... out of ten, is my boundary's here and... and I haven't expressed my boundary. I haven't told anyone where that is. And then someone gets too close, so I go, yeah. that's where yeah. the boundary yeah. is. And yeah. that's what anger normally is. It's not, yeah. and generally, anger, what's underneath it is usually sadness, primarily, or fear. Yeah. That's it. And then so what do we do when we get angry? We get shunned. And this happens a lot. You see this, I see this all the time with little kids, and it just like, Sorry, oh. Sorry, my dog. 
stresses me out because I'm like, oh God, you know, like children that are often anxious, fearful, or sad, it's showing up as anger and then they get told off and told to go and sit in their room by themselves or spanked or, you know, whatever. Yeah. And I'm not judging parents. Parenting is hard. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But, you know, it's just this misunderstanding of what, what these things are and how they show up. So that's, and I think um, that's down to and that's down to understanding ourselves, which of course a child a child isn't going to do. But understanding no. ourselves and being and then being able to express it right, and being and being yeah. comfortable in expressing that. But also, if you're a parent, how tired are you? Yeah. You know, and how yeah, do you yeah, yeah, function yeah, yeah. when we're tired? And how stressed are you? So, what's your capacity within that moment for love and compassion and calmness when you're in Tesco's and you're trying to do the shopping because you've just finished a full day at work and you've got the kids in tow and you're trying to do it and little Jimmy's going, "Give me the ice." <laughs> you know whatever <laughs> and you're gonna bend down and go are you being anxious sweetie let's have a little chat about this or are you gonna yeah. go shut up jimmy <laughs> need to do the shopping you know <laughs> it's just you can totally see how things just what get misunderstood can. and get and get um you know how how we can often get in these fight situations where you think oh because you know often when we're stressed with a child we are in a position to overpower them of course so fight could be a very standard thing so how, um, so is there one more you want to talk about? One more. So freeze. This one is often what you'll see happening in the workplace. Right. Okay. Because what tends to happen is you'll pick fight or flight, fight or flight first. So that will yeah. always be generally, depending on what's happened in your life and how your nervous system's programmed, you'll generally pick fight or flight first. Um, right. if, and generally most people, if they can get out of there, they'll get they out will. of there. That's generally like um, as human beings, because we're not, you know, we don't really have, we're not like lions where we've got really sharp teeth and strong claws and yeah. stuff. Generally nine times out of 10, if we can leg it, then we will. you know, that's the safest thing for us to do, right? Yeah. Um, if we can't leg it, we might try and overpower the, the problem or the, or the threat. Um, but, but what then happens is if we can't do either of those things, or for some people, this is just your standard reaction because of childhood trauma and various other things. You go into what they call freeze or flop. And right. in freeze, all you care about is protection. That's right. It. Right. And so, but how that might show up is you, can't, you physically can't make eye contact. Really, really quiet. Don't want to talk to anyone. Can't listen. People talking to you, yeah. you're literally not, you can't pay attention. Often might show up as clicking between tabs. You know, like if you're in a work situation and, and you start to feel really stressed and you start to procrastinate, click yeah. between the tabs or what am I doing? Shuffling papers. You know, you're not really doing anything. You're just kind of like trying to, you know, the, you want the floor to swallow you up. Basically, you don't yeah. want to don't want to be there. You have very much shut down completely. This is very different response to fight and flight, fight and flight. Your heart rate's going up. Blood's going either into the arms and hands and jaw or into the legs and, and um, buttocks. Yeah. With this, your heart rate slows right down. You don't yeah. want to be there. This is the equivalent of when, you know, a little rabbit plays dead in a field or whatever and hopes that no one sees it and thinks it's uninteresting. You're trying to make yourself invisible. You're trying to be like, I'm not even here. Like, don't And the problem with, with all of these is that it stops you from performing, right? It stops Completely. you from doing anything else or having focus anywhere else, right? As well else. as, of course, the impact on the body. Yeah. And so this is something I want to talk about. So when you are under stress, generally, if you're in fight or flight, what you're producing is um, adrenaline and cortisol, which are two hormones that most mm. people might be aware of. Um, if you are in the kind of like freeze state, it's more than likely that you're creating uh, cortisol and another chemical called acetylcholine. Right. Um, and acetylcholine kind of slows you down and adrenaline speeds you up, if you like. And mm -hmm. um, cortisol is a stress hormone. Now, in... Um, in the right doses none of these hormones are actually bad for you like we need we need all of these different things within the body like if you think about um if you want to go and if you're running a race for example mm -hmm. and you're you know you're going to sprint in a race you need adrenaline for that mm -hmm. to be able to perform properly and i think this is something with stress it's um you know there's a really great we're going to send you the link there's a really great talk by kelly mcgognall and she talks about this um research that was done in america it was thirty thousand people over eight years that they monitored and they um, looked at, is it stress that causes early death or mm -hmm. is it the belief around stress that causes mm -hmm. early death? And what they found was that believing stress was bad for you was something like the 15th largest killer in America, yeah. more yeah. than AIDS, more than um, 
uh, pneumonia, all these yeah. different things that you'd think would be big killers. And so it's actually a lot of the time our beliefs around stress and we're constantly told stress is bad for you, stress is bad for you. But it's actually not bad for you if it's in the right situation. You know, often stress is the correct response to a particular stimuli. But the problem is we're not calming down ever. We're not calming well, down the point, we're, we're not We're not managing it, right? So as in... You know, in, in those moments when it can come, you know, it can it, it can excite you or it can energize you. It can get you ready for something like a, a big performance mm. or a presentation, for example. But, you know, as we said, the greater problem comes with the volume of it and, mm. um, you know, and how we're, we're often feeling. And, and what I'd actually really love to talk about um, is to talk about how we better manage it. So maybe those 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 stresses don't come up as much. Yeah. So, so you know, I think there's so... a, a number of things around that. Firstly, think of your body like a car. It's a, a good analogy because most people have, have driven or at least know how a car works. So or seen one. Your, you're seen one, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Um, but if you think of your stress is like a brake and accelerator, right? And if yeah. you just had the breakdown all the time, so let's say, you know, you're just super, super chill, nothing really going on ever you're not really going to get anywhere very fast because you've got yeah. no oomph, you've got nothing like driving you, you've got nothing to kind of like give you a bit of um, energy to, to get going. Yeah. And some stress can be good. There's um, actually this like performance curve, you've probably mm. seen it, where, you know, you need some stress and some sort of pressure. Like if someone came to you and said, oh, um, I've got this project that needs to be done, you say, oh, what's the deadline? And they go, oh, there isn't one really, just do it whenever. You're you never probably do it. not going to really do it. But if they're like, oh, it needs to be done by Friday, you're like, oh, OK, Friday, yeah. you know, and that will either be like, oh, shit, Friday. How are yeah. you expecting me to do all of this by Friday? Or, OK, cool, I can do chunks of this and get it done by Friday. Right. Um, but you need that element um, in order to be able to start to move. So that's like your accelerator. But then you also need a break, because if you just drive around with your accelerator on all the time and increasingly yeah. gets more and more and more, more accelerator on, at some point there's going to be a corner or a wall or something and you're going to smash head straight into it because you haven't you haven't got enough break you need both you need a bit of stress and then a bit of chill bit of stress bit of chill yeah. and and that's you know you're never going to get through life unless you're a monk or something and you're totally enlightened you're never going to get through life without experiencing any stress and i think that's really interesting because i think that's the point isn't it you know we are always going to live with it I think that, you know, we are always going to live with it. You know, modern world, the modern world now, the fact of the matter is the reason that the stress is there is is because there's so much to fit in. Mm. You know, we can say that life was harder, you know, however many years ago, and it more than likely it was. You know, I'm not going up a chimney every day, thank God. Um, you know, but the, the fact of the matter is, is that I, it's a very different type of stress and it's just the volume of stuff that we have to fit into our lives that puts that stress in. Yeah. Um, so if we know that it's always going to be there, how can we manage it better um, so that we're putting good stuff in at the same time to have that pulse on the accelerator and the, and the brake. So um, I always, oh, sorry, go on. No, no, go on, go on. I always talk about it like, um, I'm going to draw you a picture. No, nice. see my some, some great artwork now. This is what I often um, share with my clients. So I often talk about it like uh, a funnel. Yeah. I can literally can't wait to see this. What, are you ready for the art, guys? Who um, <laughs> used to watch that? Was it Art Attack or whatever? Yes, or Tony Hart. <laughs> so, I don't know if you can see this. So, basically, at the top, you've got all your life experiences, good, bad, indifferent. Everything's going in the top, going in the top, going in the top. And your funnel will just start to fill up, fill up, fill up, fill up. But then down here, you've got a tap. And so you can put yeah. the tap on. And putting the tap on might be t having an early night, might be eating a healthy diet, might be going to a yoga class, might be hugging your dog, might be like, yeah. I don't know, having sex um yeah. you know whatever like you know anything that you find stress relieving that's um on the healthy side of the scale so and we're not talking yeah. about binge drinking or like you know um uh. might be useful in the moment but not necessarily so useful overall right and and so what tends to happen is you fill up a bit of stress and then you let a bit of stress out and you fill up a bit of stress and you let a bit of stress out but for most people what happens is they just keep filling up the stress and they don't actually let any stress out 
And so your yeah. body gets full of stress and tension and all the things that we're holding on to until at some point a little thing happens that most people would be like, God, why are they reacting like that? Well, it's because you're so full so of full stress up. that it just overflows. Yeah. And this is something as well within freeze. When you, if you feel tearful at work, that's often freeze response. When you just want to cry, mm -hmm. like tears are often at the at the, God, I, at the I bridge know that of. One. I used to cry at work all the time. I should have known something was wrong. I don't know how I didn't know. How, um, but it's, well, because we, you know, human beings are great at avoiding pain, so we don't yeah. want to sit with the pain. We'll, we'll do What's anything to. Yeah. So once you start to know that, also think of your body, um, like some sort of container. And mm -hmm. if that container is full of love and joy and fun and excitement and happiness and peaceful feelings and whatever, if someone mm. was to smash that open, what's mm. going to pour out? Love and joy and peaceful feelings. If your body or your container is full of anger, rage, bitterness, unresolved trauma, um, you know, sadness, grief, all these emotions that nine times out of ten we don't really want to feel, so we just keep pushing it down, pushing it down, pushing it down. Pressing, yeah. If you crack that container open, which is basically what happens when stress gets too much, what's going to come out? Yeah. You know, that's what's going to and come that's, out. I heard something wonderful. The um, Your brain is basically a reflection of all the stuff that you're feeding it with. You know, yeah. and so it's like, how are you putting that? Because and and it's as simple as that, and we don't realise it, which is why. And and I'm super conscious of time, but and I, and I really want to talk about these three tips yeah. um, that you, you and I were talking a lot about earlier. Um, well, in fact, probably there's probably actually four of them um, that I'd really like to talk about, and just to talk about them quite simply each. So self aware, so awareness, yeah. self awareness, yeah. acceptance. Yeah. gratitude and habits so yeah. let's let's try and cover all of those because these for me so, are just amazing ways of dealing with stress self-awareness if anyone wants my self-awareness checklist um i don't know if i can sh i can't share can i because it's not my screen no. but um i've basically got a self-awareness checklist that um i shared this morning in um another event that i did so um, I can share that with you guys and basically can you talk us through it quickly yeah so basically what it is is it breaks down awareness into different topics so awareness of the mind awareness of the body awareness of spirit if spirit puts you off you can use whatever word you want higher self intuition god whatever uh, food friends family work and then reflections on those those points and okay. basically you go through those points and start to look at how aware am I of this so how aware am I, am I of my mind Mm. do i have a friendly inner voice have i got an inner critic or an inner cheerleader do i meditate yeah. how easy is it just to sit with myself um you know do i allow myself time to reflect and then looking at your body how aware am i of this do i sleep when i'm tired do i eat when i'm hungry do i do i even know when i'm stressed do i know what stresses me out or not you know do i allow myself to rest properly um spirit do i feel connected do i believe yeah. in things outside of myself food do i eat when i'm hungry do i stop when i'm full do i eat food that makes me feel good or do i tend to lean on things that you know peaks and troughs or things that make me feel like i'm going to fall asleep you know yeah. friends do i even like my friends you know no and you know what it's so it's so this uh, i've talked to other people about this you know the it's so rare that we get a disruption in our lives like this mm. right and this should be the moment when we do that audit of self, right? Yeah, okay. Where, you know, tr looking at this self-awareness, you know, becoming more aware yeah. of, of ourselves. This is a beautiful opportunity to do it. Perfect it really time is. for it. And it so really you can is. just so, work um, through the checklist and I can send it to you. And there's also some yes. questions, you know, like, when am I at my best? What makes me feel tired? What makes me feel lit up? What are my negative, what are my negative thoughts and how do I deal with them? How do I stay I grounded that. when I feel overwhelmed? All this kind of stuff. So building self-awareness is really important in my opinion because if you haven't got awareness i think it was where's my quote um you know it's a very vast subject obviously the self-awareness spiritual awareness mental physical emotional etc but um it was yeah aristotle who said knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom and i yeah. really really think that's true and i think for me self-awareness is the ability to translate your feelings into words meaning and then positive action because essentially everything starts from thoughts you know the way you think directly influences how you feel and then how you behave so if you 
don't start to become aware of how you're thinking you're just going to get stuck in these thinking feeling and proving loops so if you think you're a failure you begin to feel like a failure then you behave like a failure so you reinforce and prove that to yourself i am a failure yeah. now you know yeah. or you can do it flip it on its head and choose to start to think confident thoughts and you know get a better desired outcome than you want but it, you've got to build that self-awareness before you can even no, start yeah. to to do that mine isn't quite as good as aristotle's it's uh no understanding your own mind is like a superpower which is a it little is. bit like aristotle's you are Aristotle, um so uh i want to talk about except you've just, in fact you know what let's go to gratitude quickly because you you kind of touched on it there um gratitude for me and i and i showed you this diary earlier and mm -hmm. this diary here the six minute diary um gratitude is one of the most powerful things for starting that self-awareness right so or, or when we're or starting to realize how you can evolve it yeah i think gratitude is a really important part of any healing process and it there's a lot of you know statistics around this now so it's not just talking about like oh foo foo woo woo you know oh let's just be happy for what we've got guys like there's genuine um you know statistics around this there's a company called heart math Mm. And they do a shed ton of um, research into the tuning into your heart and feeling grateful. And they do lots of work, like they'll go into um, refugee camps in Syria and they teach them this um, breathing technique, which are you happy for me to share? So there's uh, yep. different things, that, different ways that you can express gratitude. There's things like that six minute diary just in the morning, write out five things you're grateful for. If like me, you're really depressed or you find it hard to even think of one thing you can be grateful for, then what I, my gratitude list used to be, I'm grateful for electricity. I'm yeah, grateful for yeah, a roof yeah. over my head. I'm grateful Breathing. for <laughs> clean water in my taps. I'm grateful that I'm alive. You know, yeah. now I have quite an extensive gratitude practice. Um, but another way that you can do it, it's a really simple technique and this is super powerful for changing your stress in the moment. So you can do this anywhere. You can do this at your desk. You can do it wherever you want. It's called um, heart centered breathing. Yeah. And all you do is just bring your awareness to, to your heart. You can either rest a hand or, or two hands over or, or if you're in a tube or you're in public, you can just imagine that you're focusing on the heart. You imagine mm -hmm. you start to breathe in and out through the heart for a count of five seconds roughly. So you just invite the breath to become a little slower and a little deeper than it normally is. And then you bring to mind something that you're grateful for. And if you can't do that, bring to mind something that puts a smile on your face. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be something really naughty that you don't want other people to know what it is. But whatever that you. is, have that thing in your mind and you just breathe that in and out. And if your mind wanders, you just bring it back to whatever that thing is that puts a smile on your face and you just continue to breathe in for five and out for five and this is scientifically proven to create um, oxytocin DHEA and acetylcholine which are the Amazing. chemicals that counteract um, stress chemicals so Amazing. cortisol and, and oxytocin the more cortisol you have the less oxytocin you have and vice versa and the same with acetylcholine and adrenaline so if you can start to practice not yeah. being stressed whew, then your physiology yeah. is going to change because there's you can't feel stress if you feel uh if, if you if you feel gratitude right you can you yeah. can't feel the two things at the same time no um i want to talk a little bit about acceptance um mm -hmm. because i think for me you know again that friction and that stress comes when expectations are not being met right so we need to get better at lowering those expectations so and being more accepting of now because actually you know there are no such thing as bad situations or bad people or whatever however we deem that it's our thinking around it and that mm. is the thing that can cause our stress so we can look at how we change that right yeah i think acceptance is a really powerful tool as well because essentially acceptance brings you into the present moment mm. and i think mm. often with stress it's either playing out things from the past i've felt like yeah. this before i've seen this before this yeah. is dangerous the because of xyz that happened or you know there's a part of the brain in the hippocampus that actively tries to prove you right so if you think for example oh my god i'm gonna i bet i'm gonna mess up this presentation your brain will actively go away like a really obedient little servant and find you other times when you felt like you were going to f something up 
and so interesting yeah and so you know this is partly how we can then hack that part of the brain because actually when we can accept where we are in the moment and say well it hasn't happened yet and is there a different way that i can look at this and what if i was to visualize myself in that moment giving that presentation everyone's clapping at the end like i've absolutely nailed it how much better am i going to be going into that into that situation and the brain doesn't know the difference between something we vividly imagine and mm-hmm. something that is real Absolutely. and that's how heart math Absolutely. and gratitude work and that is how visualization and all you know people talk about law of attraction i do believe in that because i believe in energy but even if you don't believe in law of attraction what you can believe in is cognitive bias yeah yeah, neuropl- yeah, 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 yeah neuroplasticity yeah, yeah. and and the power of you know placebo and positive thinking because they've all been proven by science so Absolutely. um you know there's really with acceptance it's about you know also accepting where you are in the moment okay oh, i'm stressed right now that's okay and not putting any more pressure on yourself to feel differently right yeah i'm stressed i accept that i'm stressed what can i do in this moment to allow myself to feel less stressed well if i'm in flight maybe i can excuse myself from this meeting just need to nip to the bathroom guys i'll be back in two minutes mm-hmm. and then you get mm-hmm. up you leave the meeting you go into a bathroom or wherever you can go where no one's going to see you and you do 10 or 15 star jumps because you're going to burn off the adrenaline your body wants you to run you mimic run running if you're in mm-hmm. f- if you're in freeze and you're in the meeting what do you need you need to feel protected okay if you've got a colleague or someone in the meeting that you could say to them like you know oh, i don't know if i could do this bit can you help me and you know that they're going to have your back or is it that again you can leave the meeting because this is the thing i think we forget i know yeah. we might feel like we're being rude but actually we're going to be way more effective if we excuse yeah. ourselves to go to the bathroom and then you don't have to actually go to the bathroom you just go to the toilet and breathe you know breathing yeah. is such a big big part of this as well there's you know various different breathing techniques that if you start to breathe into the belly in a very simple way of doing that is just putting your hands on your stomach do 10 deep breaths when you bring the breath into the stomach it sends a signal back to the brain saying we're safe again now because when we're stressed we only breathe into the chest so using these you know using these things to your advantage if you know that you're starting to get aggressive you're intimidating someone or someone's trying to intimidate you you know there's yeah, ways yeah, that we can yeah. navigate when we know about this stress but only if we accept where we are we're not trying to make something different we're yeah. not trying to wish it into the future or worry about the past we bring it into the present say okay I'll accept where i am i'm stressed what can i do to take me out of this stress in this moment okay i can use my breath i can use positive thinking i can use positive visualization i can remove yeah. myself from the situation for a minute and then come back to it um so yeah i think acceptance is a really powerful really is. powerful thing and finally good habits um you know the the fourth there so we've done self-acceptance we've sorry self-awareness we've done acceptance we've done the power of gratitude the final one around habits um you know and actually and it's really interesting because i think you know this for me is incredibly powerful at the moment and the reason being is and i know we talked about this earlier i think one of the reasons why there is so much stress currently is that feeling of being out of control, right? We, we so want to be able to control outcomes and let's be clear. We've never really been able to control outcomes because so many outcomes are out of our control. Right. But I think what this situation is demonstrating, it's, it's demonstrating to that more us demonstrating that to us more than ever. And, and so for me, what this comes back to is us getting really good at the process the getting really clear on how we can um, manage better or put the focus on the process, i.e. the habits that are more likely to get us the best outcome. Does that kind of make sense? So yeah. for me, you know, how, what are those good habits that we can be doing that are going to look after our stress levels and to, and to manage them better? One of the things that came to me in meditation the other day, and it's something that I've been toying, playing with, and I, I wasn't going to talk about it publicly yet, but I mentioned it this morning in the workshop that I did because it seemed relevant and it seems relevant now, is discipline breeds freedom. Oh, my God. Can I just say, discipline is like the most maligned thing, but actually Um, the gift that it gives us, it's so true. And I hate that. I hate, like, it's so funny that that is what came to me in meditation because I'm literally, like, the most mischievous like yeah, naughty yeah, child yeah, yeah. like i don't want anything that i know that's good for me i don't want to do it like you know yeah. and, and i really have to you know like you might see a lot of people that are doing the work that i'm doing who are just like oh yeah it's like i i don't want to go for a run 
you know yeah. I'm, I'm i enjoy it when i'm doing it but the process yeah. of me getting up and going for a run or getting up and doing a yoga class or sitting down to meditate is like it's a process it's discipline yeah. i've got, to, I've got yeah. to be disciplined with it but there needs to be um you know i think routine and discipline and things like that are super super important because essentially you are what you do you are Absolutely. what you repeatedly you do you are what you consume so and you true. are what you practice so if are you getting up every day and practicing pressing snooze practicing being negative about yourself and your partner and the world you know trying to make everybody else wrong projecting your negative feelings onto other people because you don't want to deal with them yourself I, you know you're practicing that stuff if every yeah. day you wake up and go oh god not this again you're practicing that and yeah, you're strengthening yeah, yeah. those neuro pathways and then you're you know as we've said your your thinking creates your feeling creates your behavior creates your proving and so you're proving to yourself day in day out life's rubbish i'm stressed you know how many people say i'm stressed how, how are you i'm stressed how are you i'm busy that's not an emotion yeah. that's not yeah, how are yeah. you you know it's it's Such like we're living all, we're living in these in these really stressful times but what i, I never knew was open to me is that actually we're in control of stress because once you Absolutely. have this space and most people don't have this space and that's what self-awareness brings you is ah oh, i'm starting to notice that i'm feeling stressed in my body i know this pattern because i've become aware of it and when x happens i then do y and z and that never ends up well so what i'm going to yeah. do is do a and b instead you've got a choice you have that space to make a choice but that comes through being a bit more disciplined but the thing that you need to be careful with with routine and discipline is don't allow it to become your prison because i think a lot of people also create this great routine and i was definitely guilty of this when i was on my healing journey i was like right I'm going to cure myself of depression, anxiety. I don't care how, I don't care what it takes. And I'm going to get up every day and I'm going to do EFT tapping. I'm going to meditate for an hour. I'm going to uh, go to yoga. I'm going to eat um, no sugar, no carbs, no yeah. um, wheat, no dairy, no alcohol, no caffeine, no air. <laughs> you, know, like, uh, you know, like to give yourself a break first and yeah, foremost. Yeah, you know, yeah. like my daily routine now does include a gratitude diary a meditation session um some form of exercise nine times out of ten um you know I, I i generally each month get a massage a reiki treatment and i see a therapist you know mm. either once a month or once a week depending what i'm trying to work on um i have support people that support me because i'm always supporting others through the work that i do and i see them every month so it's like yeah that's actually a lot of things <laughs> yeah absolutely um, but that's because i've been doing this for six years yeah so i've nailed yeah. one habit you know okay I'll, i'm gonna give up smoking you know yeah. nail that first then go on to the next thing i'm, I'm not gonna snooze in the morning nail that yeah. then i'm not gonna yeah. you know now i'm gonna meditate for three minutes a day every day but do it every day get disciplined yeah. with the practice, you know? and that's the thing isn't it those those small things once a, the, making those small things daily rather than trying to do everything at once because it just Completely. won't stick yeah 100% oh Rach listen I could I could I, I know you and I could chat for absolutely hours um and but I, I'm I'm uber conscious that we, we are running out of time um and, and I, I think we've got couple of questions haven't we we have got a couple of questions i actually think and have a quick look at those questions um because i just want to kind of cover off the stuff that we have talked about and i do think that maybe we've kind of we've we've dipped into some of those questions actually mm. so have a quick look at them i think we've kind of maybe less so the with the competitiveness uh, who are you competing with yeah that's what i would work with who am i competing with and why because essentially you're not you're running a one person race it's just you in it and yeah. if you're competing with yourself why you know and there's there's a huge body of evidence to prove that if you try to implement change with compassion and kindness it happens much quicker and more effectively than if you try and do it by kind of beating yourself up so i would definitely look at like who am i competing with and why am i competing with them yeah. And I would also look at the potential for internal beliefs around that will probably likely lead back to something like, I'm not good enough. Mm. My value is only linked to what I do or like how useful I am to other people. Um, 
and also potentially looking at like your relationship with status and power and like yeah. what what is it that makes you feel safe about being you know because i think a bit of competitiveness you know like i'm pretty competitive i, I mm. am you know and I, i'm i'm a very driven driven person yeah. and i think you know it's highly likely that if you're that kind of person that's never going to get drummed out of you you know i think a lot and of nor should it right family, ambition is good value right but it's when it becomes it's uh, when it's damaging yeah, yeah exactly and i think you know a lot of my friends and family thought that when i started doing reiki and meditation all these kind of things that i was going to get quieter <laughs> didn't happen and they who i am you know like i'm loud i'm brash i swear i've you know but i'm also very spiritual and i meditate a lot and i play gong and all this kind of thing and i used to think that was a problem because i thought oh god you know i don't really fit in all these like mm. beautiful gong players who are like in their floaty dresses and being real and, and i'm not anti that it's brilliant you know they're in their goddess power and all that i'm just not that per i'm not that woman you know yeah. so i think it it's just yeah looking at and also when you're saying like how to stop the vicious circle as soon as you realize that you're in a vicious circle that's your moment of power yeah that is literally your point of power because once you notice that circle you've just got to choose to do something different at any point during that circle and just keep yeah. choosing again because it's likely that if that's an ingrained pattern you're going to choose you Don't know sometimes opposite. you're going to choose the better thing and sometimes you're going to fall back into the same cycle if you fall back into the same cycle just say to yourself oh there's a little reminder and choose yeah. again don't beat yourself yeah. up about it just you can just choose again just keep choosing again you know that that's awesome and what's the other one if i either go oh, all that out, was the one we've done uh, i think yeah we've done yeah, that one, so, thank yeah. you so next You're week um, next week there isn't actually going to be a conversation with kate um because we have uh on wellness wednesday we've got the amazing nick schubrick um who's one who's our nutritionist have you met nick have you met nick um I have you know she, she's brilliant she's our nutritionist she's actually was one that she was pr pretty much push's first coach uh, and has been with me since the inception of it and oh. she's going to be talking about um nutrition savvy lockdown i don't know about mm. you but frankly that's the most needed thing in the world. Uh, last week, I managed to put on four pounds in emotional eating, but I managed to switch that around this week. But um, yeah, so that is going to be an awesome session. I've started I baking. I never thought that would happen. I baked banana bread yesterday and the week before Who I baked you? a chocolate cake. Who am I? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? And Who are good. you? came out all right as well. <laughs> Quite good at it. <laughs> well for well being cakes when this is all over. <laughs> Um, you are an absolute star, Rach. Thank you for today. You've been awesome. You're so welcome. Um, I just wanted to say, if people want the self-awareness checklist sheet, um, if you can either just DM in the chat box, like your email, or let Kate know, and I can yeah. make sure that you guys get that as well. Um, you know, I can just share it with you so that you can have a, a list to kind of work through. Because if you're not used to this stuff, it can be a bit like overwhelming at the start. Yeah, that's amazing. So yeah, get in touch with us and we'll 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 fire it over to Rach. And Rach does lots of sessions with us as well as lots of her own stuff. Um and what's your um your Instagram handle in case anyone wants it? So my Instagram is Welford, W E L F O R D, Wellbeing. Um I'm on Instagram and Facebook. I also have a private Facebook group called Clear Community. So if you want to come and hang out with us in there, we meditate together on a Monday morning. I do a thing called a midweek melt, which is a de-stress session and um, a little live, which is just on different subjects. So whether it be, you know, courage or loneliness or depression, anxiety, whatever it might be. Um, and I've also, this is really exciting, launching very, very soon is a Clear Club, which is going to be like a mm -hmm. monthly um monthly membership where you can train with us um every every single month so. and that will be and all of that stuff will be communicated on your channels right yes yeah totally amazing rach we love you thank you You're and we will speak to you very soon bye, bye. Guys. much love bye, bye.